Uh, I want to start off by saying Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kohala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Kohala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Mills and told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom unto the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists, by Hashem and the name of His only begotten Son, who the world even calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai. His name means he's the deliverer, the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father, Ba'ashim in the name of the Ruach HaKadosh, which means the Holy Spirit, the living waters that flow through the hopeful elect to be able to give them knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are sons of the power, the Hebrew Israelites, if you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one of the elect, Shalom. And with that knowledge, wisdom, understanding, we're able to know who our adversary is, which is Esau, Edom. Esau is in the scriptures. It means wasted away he is. And they are the biblical Edomites. They are the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures, that vessel to dishonor. And with that dishonor, he's been given the fatness of the earth, which was by Isaac, which is Yehoshua, if you could receive it. And he's also been given what the his sword. He has to live by his sword, which is ultimately going to be his his blessing is going to be his curse, right? And these are the so called white men of the world: the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the Duponts, the Kennedys, the Soros, the Gates. You know the ones you see with the the suits and the bald faces that are running running this whole world into the ground that have polluted the earth with their death and destruction, and with their pollution. Um, they're bringing in a new kingdom. They're with their ill-gotten gains. They're bringing a transfer, a uh, transformation, a transfer of power to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and Lord willing, were of those, um, you know, of that number of those joint heirs, right? So this is a you know quick story about you know how do they they defile the earth, right? Which is uh, you know through their science, you know through their technology, their lying wonders, the pseudoscience. That they're able to what? Pollute the whole earth. And why do they do this? We'll just start off with this scripture. I had a couple more scriptures set up, but this is the main reason why they do this. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens that dwell therein. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Yeah, woe means destruction in the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down into you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time. So one of his great wrath is him pushing forth this 5G towers because he knows that it causes a uh, valerium. Okay. Um, that it has, you know, certain um, aluminums in it that are able to push forth what uh cancer okay and all different types of you know uh diseases which is to have you have all the people bugged out you know through the through the radiation you know and then people linked up to the the thing that they pushed forth a couple couple years ago they're going to start acting crazy that's why they had um you know the control center they had a um a zombie apocalypse that could happen right they were giving you that warning that's what they like to do they like to throw things out there and then act like, oh, it's just a joke and it's just funny, you know, but these things are actually true. You know, this is actually uh, the working of um, Satan, which is uh, the adversary to Yahweh Hashem Yahashai, a vessel created to uh, dishonor. Just real quick, let me get that Romans, because you have to have the understanding of what you're dealing with, right? You're not just dealing with, with someone that was, um, let's see. Let's get this, Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Esau, Edom is hated on this earth. Why? Because of all things like this, the 5G towers, creating, killing the animals, okay? And even our Lord, Yahweh Shemar Hashai, hates him, okay? King David, right? All these are, are great men of Yahweh Shemar Hashai, and he hated. So when those people like to say, well, you know, um, you know, our, my God never hates. Well, right here, it says right there and, and all the other points in the scriptures, right? 
So let me skip down real quick. I want to get to the point. Yeah, so right here. So Romans 9 and 21. Hath not the power... Let me get uh, 20. Nah, but, O man, O art thou repliest against our power, Yahweh, shall the thing form say to him that formed it while thou hast made thus? Yeah, because Yahweh Shema Shai is what? The potter. And he makes the vessels, right? And what are those vessels? You know, the hum you know um, the humans, one to dishonor, one to uh, honor, right? Romans 9 and 21. Hath not the potter... Power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor, so the creator can make whoever he wants. Okay, so when people like to say, Well, I don't, you know, I don't believe that he makes bad, okay, you know, that's just that's uh, your loss, that's a red flag, right? Romans 9 and 22. What if our power, Yahweh, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured what much long suffering vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? Okay, and that's Esau Edom. And that goes into Malachi. We can start at three. Malachi one and three. And I hated Esau. So then that goes that hate again for what? Esau Edom. And laid his mountains in his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Right? So, you know, that's what he was in the um the mountains, right? The uh, uh, they they were in the mountains, far as the um Caucasian mountains, or they're known as they're known as the Caucasian mountains, right? Which which were called the Caucasus mountains, right? Sakia, um, and then also you know over here you got what New York City, you got the Sears Tower over there in Chicago, so all the and then all over these um the four corners of the earth, what do you have? You have these uh, skyscrapers. But showing that who Esau Edom is, because in the law it says to have our have our house what two to uh, three levels high. So again, that just shows you that uh, Esau Edom goes against the grain, goes against Yahweh Shemir Shai. Malachi one and four. This is the point. Whereas Edom said, "We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places." Thus said Adawan Yahweh of hosts, "They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness." And the people against whom Adawan Yahweh had indignation, which is righteous anger, forever. So not for a thousand years, and then they're going to be able to come back. No, forever. Because it says in Obadiah 118, they're going to be a stubble. Okay? And again, because of all their wickedness. And they, when, they, when they're building these things back up, this is the point of it. When they're building these things up, what are they building? Their new world order, their novus order sequorium. What do they want to do? They want to have everyone linked into their smart cities. Everyone linked up. And, you know, and with many cities, um, you know, if you've ever been to New York City, big cities like New York City or L.A. or Detroit or Chicago, any of these places, what do they have? They have major pollution. OK, well, we're supposed to be in the land. You're supposed to have land, you know, see green trees. But what do you see? You see constant concrete, which, again, is another sign of uh, who's in rulership. So I just had to get those to explain why uh, Esau Edom would do something like do some things like this. It says not just human scientists say 5G radiation is killing animals and wildlife. OK, when and then I just want to go into this real quick. This is the first article that pops up when you go into the things that are tagged to 5G. It says 5G tech is a modern scourge. Yeah, so a whipping stick that ex that exposes humans environmental to untried, untested frequencies. Okay. Many people assume that the government is looking out for us. They believe and what does government mean? Government means mind control. They believe that the food we eat, the water we drink, okay, so the food that we eat, what does it have in it? GMO foods, and then whatever else that's in it. You know, if you eat at these fast food restaurants, what does it have? It has um, body parts in it that are crushed in that they mixed in with the with the you know with the food. Okay, water. What does it have in it? Fluoride. Okay, the medicine that we take. Okay, what is the medicine that they have? They try to feed you these um, you know through their through their doctors that caduces, which when you go into that sign, it's a what a snake wrapped around a rod. Which goes back to their their um a deity, um their their um healing, their their medicine god, okay for the for the deity. When you go into that uh, caduceus, you know, and you'll see it on the ambulances, 
And you'll see it everywhere that has what these hospitals. Okay. It says, um, the water we drink, the medicine we take, and the air we breathe. Yeah, because what is the air we breathe? It has the um the aluminum in them. Slaki, aluminum, right? And it has the valerium um alloy. Okay, bringing forth major um you know, major uh, diseases, right? We take the air we breathe, most of all be safe or some governmental agency would have done something about it. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, so why is nothing being done? Because we just read it, that they're the borderline of wickedness, okay? And we also read what? That they they have their, um, they're in control right now, okay? Again, they have the fatness of the earth. That's Genesis 27 and 40, right? And they were created to what? To dishonor, to bring in, to, to show forth um, Yahabba Shemar Hashai's true power, just like he did in Pharaoh when he was able to what, um, raise up Pharaoh and heart, he, what did he do? He hardened his heart so he could be able to show Yahabba Shemar Hashai his true power by flooding them out because they were what, a strong military, strong, um, you know, force, just like Babylon the Great is right now. And. Let me get, let me get something real quick. And just to show you what time we're in, this is a uh, second Ezra six. Yeah, and so this is uh, Ezra, and he's asking, what is the times? What will be the end times? It's also speaked about in uh, Matthew 24, right? And it said, uh, I'll start from 7, 2 Ezra 6 and 7. Then answer I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of times? And when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham, Isaac, and when, and when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. First Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of that followeth. So right now what we're doing by the um, Yahabba Shemashai giving us this word, we're pulling down Esau, Edom in his, in his own kingdom. We got his heel, just like when it goes back to the, when it's speaking about the womb in Genesis 25, those two nations that were one, one was, uh, you know, there was two nations in the womb, which was Esau and uh, Jacob. And then what, what were they doing? They were fighting even in the womb. And that's what's going on right now is good versus evil. Okay, the protagonist against the antagonist, right? And we're pulling down his heel by what? With this word that Yahabba Shemar Shai has given us. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yeah, because this world, this um, this cosmos right now is only for a time. And then it what goes into another time, okay? Because again, we were being punished because we went off. And this world, Babylon's going to be destroyed with uh, thermal and nuclear fire, Right, because of their wickedness and other parts of the earth, but not all the place is going to be destroyed. And then what um, Esau is going to come back, the, the elites are going to be the first crop of fruits. Okay, this is all prophecy. So going back to right here, it says, yeah, so scientists say 5G radiation is killing animals and wildlife. A lengthy report about 5G exposure has found that this newfound radiation source is damaging the health of creatures that live in the wild. Yeah, so um, a perfect example of that is um, these whales that go and beach themselves on the water. Then, um, you know, it was uh, like a couple months ago, I remember the elder, the elder um, Malcolma, he was showing that the birds were basically dying on the power lines. They were all, you know, dead in the city. They were just sitting on the ground. There was a bunch of dead birds in other places that brothers have reported on, right? So this is all, all the signs of them, their exposure with that 5G. Because some places they have it, but they want to they wanna impose it. Um, T-Mobile, I think, is the last place, that the last one where they have their, because they already have it with AT&T and um I forgot the other other service. They already have their 5G already pushing through. Okay. The 150-page report complied that researchers at John Hopkins, which looked at environmental EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies have, have radically increased in recent years. The second part looked at how living organisms are impacted. 
are impacted by these EMFs. It reveals how effects have been observed in mammals such as bats, serins, cetrins, okay, pinnipeds, among others, and birds. Yeah, so there's all different uh, birds, birds and insects, amphibians, reptiles. Okay, so the third section focuses on EMF exposure and limits the yeah. So a lot of these things, they do testing on like these rats, um, these mice and uh these monkeys. They'll do testing on them just like they did with the pig. With the pig, um, you know Elon Musk tested the pig far as uh, through radiation, or not not radiation, slakia, uh, with the karagma. He gave him the karagma. Then they had the, also they had the monkey that was you know playing video games and stuff like that. So that's what they've been doing. They send, um, you know, monkeys to space. So they always try to use the monkey and relate it, to, relate it to also to us, right, through their Darwinism. Okay, that's just the, the wickedness that I already brought out in Malachi 1 and 3. And that's why um, Yahabba Shemar Ashai um, hates Esau. This eloquent review gives insight into missing opportunities for cancer prevention, exemplified for tobacco, certain pesticides, and how... RF, radio frequency, radiation, says the spokesman. Yeah, so basically Esau Edom telling on himself. Uh, the authorities highlight how economic considerations were favored instead of cancer prevention. A strategy for so, for so doubt on cancer risk were established decades ago. is now adopted, implemented in a more sophisticated way by telecom industry regarding RF EMF risk to human beings and environment industry has the economic power to asset access to politician and media where it's concerned people are unheard. Yeah, so what do they do? They just pay off anybody that wants to um, you know, say something about this. You know, that's why no one no one ever hears about it, right? DC court appeals ruled in favor of petition calling for a greater FCC regulation of cellular radiation. So we know those are already set up. The FCC is all part of it, right? It says, um, we have, this is the second paragraph, we have more than enough research to trigger new regularity action to protect wildlife and spokesperson for EHT is further quoted as saying. Yeah, so again, if you ever, if you look it up, right, you'll see these, um, these islands that are full of pollution, Right. They're just full of pollution. They have plastic bottles. They have, you know, all sorts of junk in it. They're just big, uh, big islands full of trash. OK. And um, just, you know, a couple months ago over here in um, on the West Coast, they had an oil spill right there on uh, Newport Beach where it was they brought forth uh, these called they're called the oil tar balls. So all these little oil tar balls in the Newport Beach, where it's supposed to be a rich area, they were all coming up on the um, coming up on the shore, and they also said that you can't go to the beach, and that was nothing heard about it. Then you saw the over, over what they did in um, Katrina, you know, a long time ago, you know, 10, 15 years ago, where they um, had the oil spill. You know, all those animals were basically sitting in the oil, you know, killing the ducks. Or they had the ducks; they were all in black. Okay, and this is Esau Edom. This is his uh, queendom, right? We have more than enough research to trigger. Yeah, okay. So FCC should have done a full review of environmental impact of 5G network deployment before streamlining hundreds of thousands of 5G cell towers across the nation. So why would they want to do this, right? The real reason why they would want to have the 5G towers is because they can have everything linked up. They need more technology that's why they go over to these certain places and want to fight for what the uranium that they have that goes in these uh, cell phones because they want all the cars to be smart uh you know smart cars they want everyone to be 5g and what is the ultimate goal everyone linked up to that graven image that karagma which is to have you be a perpetual slave right here i want to get this uh, scripture it says the court not scripture, but this uh, part right here. It says, the court also noted that the FCC has not adequately responded to the Department of Interior after it raised the issue of environmental harms that EMFs cause specifically mig migratory birds. Yeah, I was speaking about the birds earlier. Related to the National Institutes of Health published a report showing that both 5G and 4G are harmful to humans and other living beings. And they actually want to go up to 6G, okay, which they already have over there in China. 
So it says, uh, with 5G coming to neighborhoods across the country, the levels of wireless radiation will significantly increase. Lawrence Davis, who believes that the time is now to act, we do not have the luxury of time. Continue to debate the issue with the wireless industry, adults, children, pets, wildlife, and environment are all vulnerable. Yep. So they already know these things, but they how do they push it? They push forth with their science. Okay, saying that it's going to be a good thing. We can we can go to certain things faster and do that, you know. So, and ultimately, 1 Timothy 6 and 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science fa falsely so-called. Yeah, so their science is all falsely so-called. They don't actually know what these things actually do. Right. They just test them out on, on animals and then they're like, oh, OK, it works out on people. Let's see if it has any. And profane, what is that? Profane is outside the temple. OK, because why would someone want to, uh, you know, do something like that? Yeah, that's not it. So this word uh, science, it goes uh, Greek 1108. The knowledge signifies in general intelligence, understanding, which they don't understand what these things do, right? The deeper, more perfect and large knowledge of such as belongs to the more advanced moral wisdom, such as seen in the right living. Yeah, so they don't have moral wisdom, again, because they're that, they are the wicked. And it says in the end that they will have they will have power, as we read in uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 9. And that's why the people are mourning. Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. So you're mourning when all your everything that you're using, you know, your food, your um, the water that you drink, you know, your air, your children, the philosophy, everything that you have is is all gone. It's all, um, you know, hit up by Esau Edom, all destroyed. Psalm 64 and 1, hear my voice, O Adawan Yahweh, in my heart, Slakia. Let me start, 64, Psalm 64 and 1, hear my voice, O power Yahweh, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. And who is our enemy? Esau Edom, as we read, um, Esau I hated and Jacob I loved, right? And that's how we know who our enemy is. That goes in the Psalms 83, that crafty council that tried to cut us off from being a nation, tried to hide us away, right? With all their uh, pseudoscience, you know, with their lies, their deception, right? And that's how these other heathen nations, which are known as dogs, were able to what lick our wounds. That's why you look in the ghettos and the vadios and the reservations. What do you have? You have Esau always in your pocket, okay? You have on the reservations, what do you have? You have the casinos, <laughs> Um, that Esau is in your pocket right there, took an, taking over the land. Then you have the ghettos and the vadios. You have the, what, the bodegas, you know what I mean? And then you have, what, these Chinese the Chinese stores, right, with Elam and um, uh, the Mobites. And selling you a uh, dog and cat and, and whatever that they wanted and then putting a bunch of sauce on it, you know, frying up foods with, with tons of oil, which is creating, um, creating a lot of different variations of, uh, things that happen to us, right? Psalm 64, that's how you know who your enemy is. Psalm 64 and 2, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Yeah, so hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. Again, they have these things called think tanks, where they have professional, let me just get it. Let's see, um, I just want to get the definition of that. They have these think tanks where they're able to let's see. Yeah, think tank. So right here it says a body of experts providing a body of experts providing advice and ideas in a specific political or economic problems. Yeah, so whatever that goes on. And what's the problem? 
knowing that we're actually Hebrew Israelites. That's why they um a lot um these camps they have what 501c3s. But these 501c3s people they can't tell the truth. They can't tell the moth, right? Then you got these people um that are being cardinal coming up against um uh, you know carrying around guns and thing and weapons and things like that to camp. Okay, that's a um. You know that's that, that's thought about, right? And we know that they're you know on the left hand side that these were these were um, you know the hands of Saul. You know this is the tab the tabernacle just like the tabernacle of David's being risen up on the right hand side. You got the tabernacle of Saul being um you know brought down, you know by the um by the true prophets, right? But this is their think tanks, a body of experts providing advice and ideas in specific political and economic problems. Yep, and we are a problem to them. Why? Because we are telling the truth. We are um, putting them down. With, we're pulling down strongholds. So Psalm 64 and 3. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Yeah, so what are they doing? They'll, they'll say lies. They'll slander thy brother. They'll say, oh, look at him. You know, they, they're always selling drugs. You know, look at their pants hanging off their ass. Meanwhile, they're funding these, um, you know, these hip hop and, and, and um, these certain celebrities to do this wicked abomination things. Right. And that's one. Of, that's another form of their sword. Psalm 64 and four. They may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves. This is the point of it. Psalm 64 and five. They encourage themselves in an the evil matter. They commune in laying snares. Which, which uh, snares are traps. Privily, they say, who shall see them? Yeah, so again, they sit in the, that's Psalms uh, 10, where they sit in the lurking places, right? They're they're watching everything they move, you know, everything that's going on when they could stop the violence, but they don't because these are, they are commune on laying uh, these traps, right? They search, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both their inward thought of every one of them, their heart is deep. Yeah, so they have, all the information on how to be able to take out Jake, right? But they didn't count on the spiritual power of Yahweh Shem Rashi to awaken uh, those prophets through the spirit and to be able to have those living waters. They didn't count on that because again, Esau, Edom is cardinal. And how do they search out, you know, a diligent search? They've been doing the same thing for, you know, ever since they came in power, right? And even before that, they were doing the same type types of things to Jake, Right? Psalms, yeah, so we got that. And these are all traps and snares. Uh, the hip-hop industry is a trap and a snare, okay? You know, trusting in Esau is a trap and a snare. And it says that even the, um, let me get this, even when Esau Edom is put down, everyone's going to be able to rest, and that's go that goes into these animals, right? Isaiah 14 and 4, and this is a future prophecy, Isaiah 14 and 4, they shall take up a proverb against the king of Babylon and say, who hath the oppressor seized? The golden city is seized. Yeah, so this is the golden city. Why? Because of that, the all the um the wine and the philosophy, the Babylonian juice, right? Let me read this in the NLT. Isaiah 14 and 4, that you will take up the proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how the oppressor has seized the golden city seized. The Lord Yahweh Shemir Rashi has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Yeah, so they're not able to have that that power. You know, they're not able to have their weaponry. Again, there's no more wisdom and teaming, right? And now they are broken down by what? The, these missiles that are going to come at them. And in, in the beginning stages is the what? The, um, you know, these words that are coming out that are a fire to to Esau's kingdom, okay? This is the point right here, Isaiah 14 and 6. He who struck the people in wrath will continue a stroke, who ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and no one hinders. Yeah, no one's able to help these uh, demons, Esau, Edom, because this is their cash cow. So none of these people, are gonna be, their NATO, their EU, their beast system is not going to be able to help them. And this was the point of bringing this out right here, is um, Isaiah 14 and 7. The whole earth is at rest, and as quiet, they break forth in singing. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at the tree and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Thence thou art laid down, no f no feller is come upon us against us. Yeah, so even the trees, because what do they do with the trees? They're killing the trees with the um the radiation too. And then what are they doing? They're cutting them down constantly because uh, they're constantly building all the time, right? 
and, you know, using paper for whatever. So they're always constantly, um, you know, doing this wickedness. So even the trees are going to rejoice, right? The animals are going to rejoice from all the, all the things that Esau Edom is doing wickedly. And so with this, um, let's see, yeah, and the reason why they do, you know, these, uh, as far as these 5G towers, you know, going back to the article, right, you know, killing of the animals and things like that, you know, creating bad health is because they, they think that no one sees them. And I'll end it right here on this scripture. This is Psalms 36 and 1. Psalms 36 and 1. It says, The transgression of the wicked said within my heart, there is no fear of our power, Yahweh, before his eyes. Yes, yeah, so he doesn't fear um, Yahweh by Shemar Ashai. For he flattered himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Yes, yeah, so he's flattering himself saying, we're, we're finally going to be able to do this. We're finally going to be able to have the new world order. You know, we're going to have everyone un under subjection, you know, everyone under our rule. You know, if they don't comply, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll hit them, we'll press the button. Okay, they're flattering themselves right now because they think that they're close, right? Because they have but a short time, so they're trying to pull all their things out because they see they know what the chariots are. They know that a brothers on the high, the prophets, the true prophets on the highways and the byways that are waking people up, and they're scared of that, right? That's why they call things misinformation. Psalms 36 and 3, the words of his mouth are iniquity, right? Sin upon sin, and the seat he had left off to be wise and to do good. Yeah, so he can't do good. He wasn't meant to do that, right? And this is the point right here. Psalms 36 and 4, he deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He, ab he abhorreth not evil. Yeah, so he, he doesn't despise evilness, okay? He loves it. You know, and let me read this in the NLT. Psalms 36 and 4. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not appear evil. And that's what this devil is constantly doing. He's what, setting up traps and wickedness, you know, upon his bed. And that goes into Micah 2 and 1. All right. But we know that when, when you have that pride, like Esau Edom has that pride, you're, you're going to get destroyed. And no, and no one's going to escape the day of wrath, okay? No one's going to escape their judgment. This is Proverbs 16 and 4. Slock here, bear with me. So let me get, let me get, um, what's that? Zephaniah three and five. Zephaniah three and five, the just, I don't want Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning do he bringeth his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. Yeah, so Esau Edom doesn't know no shame because he thinks that he can't be touched. But again, he's preserved for the end. Like just like these elites, they're preserved for the end to be able to be destroyed. Because again, their pride has exceeding them. Let me go down to Proverbs 16 and 18. Proverbs 16 and 18, pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah, so that haughty goes back to their pride. And that's, that's what's happening right now. Their pride is, is um, going to be their destruction. And I'll end it right here. It says, Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord Adawan Yahweh had made all things for himself, yet even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that has a proud heart and is abomination to Adawan Yahweh through hand, joined in hand, he shall not go unpunished. He shall not be unpunished. That's right. Let me read this again in the NLT. Proverbs 16 and 5. 
everyone proud in heart is an abomination to Adawanya Hawabat Shimon Shai. Though he joined forces, none will go unpunished. Yeah, so even though they try to do wickedness, they conspire, they're not going to be able to um, accomplish their search. Because again, this story has already been written from the beginning, um, Isaiah 46 and 10. So with that, call Hala Yahweh by Shimei Shai, Barakatha Yahweh by Shimei Shai, Shalom to Alek, Kwame Yahshalom.